Very well. At least someone is willing to stand up for tradition. Thank you again. I... I started to worry. I didn't know if you were ever coming back. Did you find any records? Any sign of the old Orton Taig? You... you found them? Let me see. That's my great-grandmother's name! And her husband! Oh, great ancestors! It's them! It's me! I am an Orton! Oh, thank you! I have to take these to the assembly right away! Find me there! Once these are acknowledged, I'll give you any reward! Impressive work, Warden. King Haramont's impending coronation has been entered into the memories. Is there something more I can help you with? Ask, and I shall do my best to answer. Your presence has been recorded in the memories. I wish you well. Are you looking for records of the Grey Wardens? We have many. I'm quite busy. Please do not disturb me. Are you with that warrior girl who's always here? Shh! I'm doing very important work. Shall be done. My name's Orta. After the old Orton house, they gave our seat back, and the records show which houses still owe House Orton money. One day, I will be able to properly thank you for all you've done for me. And I don't know what treasure is left, but whatever I get, you can have as much as you want. I'll have to find someone willing to look. Maybe a whole expedition. If the Taig is still there, it must have something. House Orton will not forget this kindness. <laughs> Didn't that sound official? sort of company you've taken up. It shall be done.
So, you and Branka were really married? Tell you what, boy. <laughs> you ever been married? Of course not. I was raised in the Chantry. Think the hardest stone you can find. Marriage is for suckers. So, no pitter-patter of little Ogwen feet running around the home cave? I take it. All I ever got out of that moss liquor was a headache, a deaf ear, a scratched up back, and that rash it took three different ointments to get rid of. Wow. She gave up on you, did she? And here you are, a keeper too. It's hard to believe we have a king again. I suppose the ancestors figured the Idukans had enough. You've returned. With all the excitement over the new king, I never expected you to remember my poor son. Did you learn anything about my ruck? Oh, my poor boy. I... I guess I knew, but... I just wish I could have seen him one last time. Here. This is my husband's masterwork, the first shield he smithed. I... don't have anyone to save it for anymore. I'd like you to have it. For what you risked to bring me this news. As you say. Why are you smiling like that? You look suspiciously like the cat that swallowed the pigeon. Canary. What? I look like the cat that swallowed the canary. I once had a very large cat, but not my point. My point is, why are you smirking? <laughs> you were watching him with great interest, I might add. In fact, I believe you were enraptured. He's our leader. I looked at him for guidance. Oh, I see. So what guidance did you find in those hips, hmm? No, no, no. I wasn't looking at, you know, his hind quarter. Certainly. I gazed, glanced in that direction, maybe. But I wasn't staring. Or really seeing anything, even. Of course. I hate you. You're a bad person. I haven't eaten in days. <sighs> Give me a moment. 
woman. I, the stone. I feel like I'm about to fall off the world with all that sky up there. Strange? <laughs> Strange is your wife turning out to prefer the ladies, not living in a world without a bleeding ceiling. Well, let's get moving. We're losing, what you call it, daylight. It is begun. Yes, it is good to have my sword at my side again. I call her Asala, the soul, my soul. She is forged from rare blue steel and has served me faithfully for many years. Yes, you understand what it is like to have a weapon that is part of you. Few others do. What say you? By all means. My adventures? <laughs> I'm hardly an old man just returned from across the ocean, am I? Should I shake my fist at nearby children while I talk about the good old days? Oh, well, if a racist crack like that doesn't cajole me into telling a tale, then nothing will. Let's see, my second mission ever for the Crows was a bit intriguing. I was sent to kill a mage who had been meddling in politics. In Antiva, nobody is too important to escape the reach of the Crows. They've killed kings and queens. That is simply how it is. As it turned out, the mage in question was quite a delightful young woman. Long, divine legs, as I recall. I caught her in a carriage on her way to escape to the provinces. After I killed her guard, she got down on her hands and knees and begged for her life. Rather aptly, I might add. So I joined her in the carriage for the night and left the next morning. Well, yes, twice, actually. Then she decided to try and use me instead. The woman had actually convinced me to speak to the crows on her behalf. What can I say? I was young and foolish at the time. Then, as I was kissing her goodbye to return to Antiva City, she slipped on the threshold and fell backwards out of the carriage. Broke her neck. Shame, really, but at least it happened quickly. At first, yes. Well, not upset. Surprised is really a better word. Then I found out that she had told the driver to take her to Janellen instead. She had planned to lose me in the provinces. I would have looked very foolish to the crows. As it was, my master was very impressed that I had done such a fine job of making it look like an accident. The circle of magi was unaware of foul play and everyone was happier all around. I suppose, but she was dead. She didn't need to be happy. It was after that when I learned that one needn't let a pretty face go to your head. Professionalism was key. That's my moral of the day, you see. Hmm, without a doubt. But a certain coldness is called for, no? You would think that after all my youth and the hardships of my training, such coldness would have come naturally. Alas, not. But that's enough tale spinning from me for the moment. Talking about the mage has made me a bit nostalgic, I'm afraid. Ah, the good old days. What's on your mind? I try not to dwell too much on the mistakes of my past, of which there are many. I would go quite mad if I did that. But I do have one regret. 
the greatest misstep of my life, made even more grave because it had dire consequences for someone else. Years ago, I was assigned as mentor to a lad, Anaren. He was my first apprentice. Anaren was an elf, raised in one of the elven alienages, and he was very mistrustful of humans, especially humans in authority. All he knew of the humans was what he had seen in the alienage. He was very wary of us. What Anaren needed was time. Time to get used to his new home. Time to emerge from his shell so we could build a rapport. I gave him no such time. I was young and arrogant. He is a mage, I thought. He needs to grow up and act like one. I expected too much from him, too quickly. I gave no consideration to his origin or his feelings, and he retreated further from me. All I could think of was how stubborn he was, how he was throwing away all his talent and his potential, just to be difficult. Oh, I dread to think. I was a harsh taskmistress. He might have thought I was a demon in disguise. You cannot plant crops in the cold, wintry ground. You cannot teach a student who is closed off and unresponsive. Patience is what is needed, and I learned that too late to help him. Anaren ran away from the circle one night. I had berated him over some trivial, ridiculous matter that I no longer remember. I drove him away because of something utterly unimportant. He was a child, fourteen at the time of his leaving. They had his phylactery and they hunted him down. The Templars. That is what they do. They hunt down and neutralize rogue mages. They called him Maleficar, a mage who practices forbidden magic, deserving of death. He was a child, misunderstood and lost. I begged the Templars to tell me if he suffered, if they gave him a quick death. I got no answers from them. I was his mentor, and they wouldn't even tell me what became of him. I should have known better. I had the best mentors. They were kind, compassionate. Why didn't I learn from them? I failed in Aaron. All I had to do was listen to him. He would try to talk to me, and I would tell him to concentrate on his spells. He talked about the alienage sometimes and the Dalish. He always talked about looking for the Dalish elves. The Templars are well trained and thorough. That he still lives, it would be a vain hope. The apprentices that came after Anaren benefited greatly from the lessons I learned from him. In a sense, he was my teacher, and I his student. And there it is. My story. My one greatest regret. You have excellent taste. Orzammar has sent her best, Warden. It has been a long time since the Dwarven army has marched on the surface. Outfitting any army on short notice, there's always room for more gear. Gems would serve the most utility. The middle stones, sapphires and the like. We're dealing with many smaller foundries and larger values might overwhelm. At your command, Warden. Orzammar's finest are eager to carve some history. <laughs> we'll be fine, as long as the ground hasn't forgotten how to shake.
Everything brings us closer to victory. There you are. Wanted to talk to you. You and I, we've... You know how sometimes you spend time with people and things? Hmm. I was thinking, uh, I do know some people out here on the surface. A person, actually. A girl I knew in Orzammar, before I left, obviously. Her name's Felsi. She and I were uh, friends after Bronca left for the deep roads. I'm sure she's forgiven me by now. Thought maybe I'd track her down, see how she's been living. I tried to look her up the last time we were at Lake Kalanhod. She wasn't at work at the inn. At home with her sick mother, they said. I figured it was just the ancestors telling me something. But I keep thinking about her. Well, and a good friend you are, Warden. I'll think about you if we ever... Uh, no, actually, that would be gross. No, uh, what was it you wanted to say? What about? Oh, sure. I'm fine with it. I mean, she was a real firebrand between the sheets. But a bit soft in the skull, you know what I mean? Explains why she left, anyway. Handling what? Bronca? Pfft. That treasure's been long buried. Ancestors, take me. You people whine like tea kettles around here. What is your wish, Kadan? Speak, then. Then someone should release it into the wild. It is in danger of dying out. No, that just came to me now. Tell me, where is the wisdom in crying for a derelict god to save you? My people have a tale. A great Ashkari during his travels came upon a village in the desert. There he found the houses crumbling, the earth so dry and dead that the people tied themselves to each other for fear a strong wind would carry the ground out from under their feet. Nothing grew there except the bitter memory of gardens. The Ashkari stopped the first man he saw and asked what happened here. Drought came and the world changed from prosperity to ruin, the man told him. Change it back, the Ashkari replied. The villager became angry then, believing the Ashkari mocked him, for no one could simply change the world on a whim. To which the Ashkari answered, Then change yourself. You make your own world. Believe in whatever you like, absent creators or whimsical gods. Follow prophets, or Ashkari, or omens in the earth and sky. You will find wisdom only if you seek it. Hashera, we should move on. As you wish. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? I have a question for it, if it will indulge me. My understanding is that it encountered the smith named Caradin. He who was responsible for the creation of the golems, that he had become a golem himself. What I do not know is what became of him. Why did he not return with it? I would have many questions for him. Dead? But... Did it kill him? Did he attack it? No. I see in its eyes. It does not tell me because it thinks I would not want to know the truth. Perhaps it is right. May I ask what became of the Anvil of the Void, assuming that it too still existed? Then it was no doubt for the best. 
with Caradin also goes any chance I might have had of finding answers on my past, I assume. Tell me, did it find out anything from Caradin? Anything at all about how I might have been made? Meaning that I was once a living creature? That seems highly unlikely, and more than a little insulting. Is it certain? Hmm. Was I forced into this? Or simply glad to abandon a frail body? And more importantly, who was I? I simply must know. I cannot help but believe that answers lie elsewhere in the Deep Roads. We must look. If it can search the Deep Roads, I may remember something. If not, then I will have to wait. I await your command. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you are very cute to ask so many questions. Of course I don't. It is no matter. My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes. By Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say, that the fun was to begin once more. I found the game fun. I was too young to understand the truth behind what was happening. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait, <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. It was a game, and I a young girl. If I didn't get to play, I would have been very upset. Thankfully, the Wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere, and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. There are only absolutes, so only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, tis this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? An interesting answer for a mage. Enough of this talk, let us return to the task at hand. It is begun. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Oh. Hmm. That was interesting. And draining. I called forth the spirit that sustains me so that it could lend us aid. I did not realize it would take this much out of me. It seemed a good idea at the time, if a little rash. I think it may have weakened the spirit a little. Well, we can't all be quick wit McSmarty Pants now, can we? Apparently, you have the monopoly on cleverness. Shall be done. Hmm. This place is familiar. No, this is something earlier. There is a place, a cavern, that is not far from here. I know where it is. I remember. Its offer is appreciated. I will mark the location on its map. If we can journey there soon, I am most curious as to what we will find.
Assault is begun. I do not know. It is an odd thing to experience. These ruins are always overrun by vermin. There may be something noteworthy further in, however. Was this the home once? Did I live here? Shall be done. shall do it. Very well. Very well. I see nothing. 
whatever was once here is gone. Shall be done. It shall be done. It is begun. Crawling with filth, 
typical. Shall be done. shall do it. begun. I'm uncertain what I hope to find here.
shall be done. I shall do it. As you say. Very well. What is this? This... this I remember. It has dates and names. This is to honor those who volunteered, those who became columns. And there is my name, Shale of House Kadash. I recognize it. I was not created as I am now. I was once a creature of living flesh, a dwarf and a woman. This is a revelation. Something. It is an answer, though still I wish I had been able to speak with Caradin. I will need to think on these things I have learned. Perhaps I will speak to it of them soon. For now, let us carry on as we have. I am listening. Its journeys are fascinating. I had thought its chances slim, but perhaps I am even wrong on that point. Does it wish me to leave? I can, though I see no reason to go. Refreshing. Normally such words would be accompanied by the wave of a control rod. I shall remain as it asks. Perhaps we should continue. Its chances of success are small enough without further dawdling. <laughs> 